PCN is brought to you in part by the following underwriters. joining us for another edition of PAC TV Community News. Tonight we bring you to the YMCA groundbreaking at a new development in South Plymouth. You visit a simply soothing sanctuary in Kingston and meet some cheering youth from the South Shore. Our health and wellness segment brings us to the Kingsbury Club in Kingston to learn about youth tennis. We visit an Earth Day race at Miles Standish State Park and Town Talk brings us a wrap-up from Pembroke's town meeting. It's all coming up on this week's PAC TV Community News. And we begin tonight at Hobbamock Elementary School in Pembroke with their Design Club. Design Squad is a children's show that airs on PBS. Pembroke Elementary School children have developed their own Design Squad, where they learn how to make roller coasters, bridges, chairs, and more. PCN visited one of their classes to hear more about the projects that they have constructed. Well, Design Squad is something that um, actually I get the idea from um, a program at the Museum of Science that I had gone to. And there's a show on PBS called Design Squad, and they have in, um, different ideas for engaging kids in engineering, design, process, projects, and activities, and um, really engaging them in those 21st century thinking skills that we're trying to promote. You build different projects or like challenges and then you test them or we compete or something like that. I like the catapults because you get to do like a, there's a target and you can go and try to get as many points and you can do like the height to see how like far you can get and like some of them go really high and you get to build the catapult. Teamwork and collaboration is really important when, like, during Design Squad because you, you have so many ideas that are so great and then you have to pull them together and you really need your team support. Yeah. If you were to have an idea or something, you would, well, you need to work together to make that actually happen and but you should always like listen to your teammates too because maybe if you use their ideas too you could make something even better and we think that everybody walked away feeling successful from the smallish age bracket which was third grade in this particular one I'm up to sixth grade and they worked together beautifully and felt successful at the end. And we had 53 kids as part of our program. Um, uh, we did eight hour and a half sessions and we had a different challenge each session. So um, there was one that was inspired by the Olympics and we made bobsleds that went down some plastic tubes and we had bobsled races. We had earthquake proof homes. We made newspaper towers. We had paper airplanes that were all different. Flying and, through the library. Yeah, yes. the library and up the halls to see whether they'd loop or yes. how far they'd yes. fly. And they knew that if they weighted them different, one of the, the boys said with paper clips or whatever, they knew that might solve some of their problem. And they really got thinking beautifully. Yeah. Um, and we saw a lot of cross-grade collaboration, too, where some sixth graders may be at a table where some third graders were, and there was some, like, how did you do that? And, and that kind of um, interaction is so, uh, it's so wonderful, I think, as teachers to see. We made paper airplanes out of, like, a booklet, and we'd put, like, cuts, or we'd put paper clips on them to see what they do, or, like, tricks or moves. The roller coaster is, um... We made it out of foam tubes, and um, we'd send a marble down it and see if we could do like loop-de-loops and like get it up and over hills and stuff. My favorite was 
was uh, a roller, the roller coasters. You could like do loop de loops, uh, like connect the tracks, do like stuff. It. This inspires teamwork. This inspires children to use their imagination and not look at something and say, I can't do this. It tells them, I can try. And with collaboration and help from their peers, it's not, it's not impossible to do. And they don't feel that way. Redbrook is a new community development in South Plymouth from the AD Makepeace Company. It'll have homes, stores, recreation, and a village green. This month, they broke ground on a new YMCA that will be a central focus in this community. PCN was there to hear from local and state officials on the project. Good morning all to this wonderful day. Who would have thought after so many years of planning that we would be here today to celebrate uh, the coming of a full facility YMCA in the great community of Plymouth. Uh, on behalf of uh, all the hard workers and our board of directors, thank you for uh, joining us for this momentous uh, morning groundbreaking. Encircling this location will be a series of neighborhoods in a wide variety of styles and price points. The neighborhoods will be connected by walking trails and public open space. Redbrook will be a haven in which to enjoy the natural environment around us. The YMCA will be at the very heart of the village, literally and figuratively. We see the Y concept of community and good health as representative of the Redbrook philosophy. We, have, we will have very much to celebrate in the coming months, but it was important for us to begin with this very special partnership with the YMCA. Thank you very much to the community of Plymouth for welcoming uh, us, the Old Colony YMCA, into this community with the ability to build a uh, brand new facility. Um, this is really an exciting project for the whole town, but in particular for this part of town, which we know has been greatly underserved for recreational uh, activities for, for children and for families. And, and the, wise, uh, the WISE model is a family model. It's not just for children. And, uh, any of you people who do live down here, you're going to be thrilled when this place actually opens and when the second phase happens. So we're going to have a planned community with retail space, something that people in this area have, have needed for a long time, uh, as well as recreational space and beautiful new homes and, uh, and nice subdivisions. Walking past a very healthy uh, um, a very healthy place to live. But I am excited to see this happening here in the southern part of town. Uh, I reside in this area and I've always felt that it was underserved. And to see a facility like this that makes sure um, that not just people who can afford it get a chance to enjoy the recreation, but people who can't afford it. These, this group has worked tirelessly to raise the resources necessary to make sure those kids that want, need that opportunity, need a place to go, need a place to, to have recreation, uh, can do it. And it's, it's been a tireless effort. Uh, you take the kids who need a place to belong and, who and you nourish their spirits and help them thrive. Not only do you teach them to swim and do play sports, you also teach them to make good decisions and become confident leaders and good citizens. It is a well-known fact that YMCA makes the community better and stronger, and we're very appreciative that you chose this spot in South Plymouth to build your new facility. Today is um, a, a very special day uh, for the uh, Plymouth School Department. It's special because um, this is an opportunity to enhance a partnership that we've had with the YMCA. Uh, we have uh, programs in all our elementary schools that really help parents to, to raise kids early morning, afternoon. Um, and one of the things that I remember uh, several years ago, friend Weiler called me, friends on the board, and uh, a, a, a good friend, he asked, uh, we're doing a survey with the Y and we want to find out exactly what the need is in Plymouth for uh, enhancing Y services. And I said, you know what, I'll tell you, um, I think we need two Ys. I think we need one in the south and one we need one in the north because we need more and more opportunities for kids. Our kids need to be uh, part of something. Uh, our parents need opportunities to help them because our parents are very busy uh, and they need opportunity. And we, you know, at, at that time I said we really need um, something like a full service Y. It's awesome to be here today to see that happening on this property. It's unbelievable. One, two, three. Oh, look at that, huh? Good job. It's not your first rodeo, eh? On Route 3A in Kingston, right in the main traffic flow, is an unexpected oasis of tranquility called simply Soothing Sanctuary. It's a 
place of peace, healing, and inspiration. Founder Dee Davison, also known as Mother Earth, began Simply Soothing after coming to a life affirmation of her soul's purpose. I started my my uh, my path my my path to uh, my new way of life, which is one of spirituality. Uh, my belief is you heal from the inside out, but first you have to journey in. So the journey in is um, is a place where you want to feel safe. Um, you want to feel uh, there's no judgment on you. So I'm, I'm hoping that what we bring here at Simply Soothing Sanctuary is up that place, um, the sacred space to uh, come to the quiet place within yourself where you can delve or you can heal. There's Reiki offered here. There is Shambhala, which is another form of energy work. All of it is um, derived with a purpose for you to be able to rest within yourself and with no fear. We have a seven circuit classical labyrinth in the backyard, which is open for um, public walking. The labyrinth is viewed as a metaphor of um, a pilgrimage. So it's used for a quieting of the mind. When you get to the center, it's all about uh, meditating. So you sit there until you feel complete, whether you have an answer or not. Um, you take what you gain in the center back out with you. We offer uh, drum circles here. They're, um, you know, either free or by donation. It's awesome. A drumming is just a beautiful way, again, to help access the inside that you haven't been able to voice. And you don't have to voice it. You can let an instrument do it for you. I am an Earth Mother. Mother Earth is a nickname, and Mama Moon is also what I've been called. So. Um, and I love those names so that, you know, I, I vibrate with them, I resonate with them. So again, I'll say that Simply Soothing Sanctuary is all about coming to a place of um, your vibration and what you resonate with. And the more we gather and the more we um, allow ourselves to become the fullness that we are, um, the better that will be. Um, each ripple in a circle t touches another circle. As I journey into my um, I call them the winter of my life, you know, I'm 65, I'll be 66. Uh, I'm just coming to it. I'm loving it. I, you know, I've let go of the titles of mother and, um, you know, daughter and sister and all of that. And I'm coming into my fullness as a woman in, in, uh, in the later part of my years. I, I, I grow with each of the people that I deal with. I grow with each of the women that are drawn to come here. I totally feel that, um, you know, when the pupil is ready, the teacher appears and vice versa. So at times I am a pupil of the people that come here and at times I am a teacher for the people that come here. You know, I feel what we need um, is in this world is more balanced energy, um, more positive vibration, more talk, more love, more nurturing. Um, and through that, um, I feel we'll heal. Cheerleading is not just a fun extra at local sports events, it's a competitive and tough sport. Cheer Factor on the South Shore is a high performance training center for local cheer athletes. They work with local Pop Warner youth programs and train youth for national cheer competitions. They work to build self-confidence, integrity, and honesty, as well as good sportsmanship in their athletes. PCN caught up with a couple of local girls to see what goes into training to be a competitive cheerleader. The competition that the girls made it to is called the Summit. 
and that's going to be held in Disney in May. And they've worked all year to make it to this prestigious event. So they've gone to about eight competitions, and they were lucky enough to be awarded a at-large bid to the cheerleading summit. Um, there'll probably be over 500 teams that will be there. Their team is a junior level one team, a large junior level one team. And in their division right now, I think there's about seven teams that they'll be competing against in Florida. We practice three days a week and it's just, we have to be work really hard and we have to work together as a team. But because it's not like an individual sport, we always have to work as a team. We've worked really hard throughout the year to get to the summit, which is a big competition in Florida. And we've practiced a lot, three days a week, just to get to this comp and be able to perform and hopefully be able to bring home rings and jackets. Tumbling is a big factor in all-star cheerleading and so is stunting and in order for the girls to get and the boys to get good with the stunting and the tumbling um, they need to be very they need to be physically fit and they need to make sure that they're you know, maintaining a healthy lifestyle and all that stuff and most coaches promote that the toughest thing about training is probably the conditioning that we have to do to get our tumbling better or get our jumps higher and being so clean, but our coach has always been there for us to help us through everything that we do, and they're really all great coaches, and we couldn't have asked for more. They've worked very, very hard. They practice five and a half hours, um, and then another hour for tumbling weekly and they'll be adding in multiple practices the next couple of weeks um, for, to prepare for the summit. We all, we're all like a family. We all laugh. There's no crying. Like, we give each other hugs when we're not, we don't feel good or, I don't know, we're just all like sisters together and we all get along really well. All together, there'll be 32 kids out on that floor competing in Florida, and it's going to be fun. The fourth annual Earth Day race came to Miles Standish State Forest Saturday, April 19th. PCN's own Brian Sullivan was there to meet up with the event organizer, Sonny Bean, and several race participants to get the full scoop on what turned out to be a beautiful morning for a race. You're going to go one mile around this loop and then you're going to be on the paved bike path through the state forest for the rest of the run. Uh, this is year four of the Earth Day Run for Your Mother at Miles Standish State Forest. Well, I like the forest a lot because there's not traffic. I would run a lot of races and I'd always be afraid, you know, of getting sideswiped by a car. And in the forest, what better place for an Earth Day race than in this beautiful Miles Standish State Forest? There are mile markers out there. There are red arrows and there are pink. Um, ribbons on all of the trees. That's how you're going to find your way through the course. Yeah. There are two water stops. There's a water stop at mile one and another one just past mile three. Finish line obviously is right over there in the uh, where we just came from. So with that, runner set. The race has actually come a long way since the first one back in 2011 where it was rainy. A number of people actually got lost in these trails, but that hasn't been a problem since they put up pink ribbons all along the pathway. This year, everything went swimmingly. Not only did people get these cool new t-shirts, but they had a great time running the race. I ran with my daughter, Sydney. It was a great race. My markers were totally clear. It was easy to figure out where to go. The pink ribbons uh, along the path were wonderful. Uh, just really easy to follow and at one point I busted out of the woods and saw some friends I hadn't seen in a long time just walking up the end of the street so that was kind of cool too. A little hillier than we thought but it was a great day out there. Sunshine, nice shade when we needed it. Great day, good friends, running for Earth Day, supporting a good cause. Okay, and you're all friends, so be next. For Sunny Bean, the idea of running an Earth Day race came to her a few years ago after having run in several other charitable races. 
The premise of the raise is to raise money for the Plymouth schools and community for recycling buckets and bins. Miles Standish State Forest just seemed to be the perfect fit for such an endeavor. When you're running too, it's broken up in a lot of different parts of the bike trail. So I feel like, you know, you get to the end of one, it's like, all right, here's the next one. And none of them are really that long and they've got some nice rolling hills to them. It's such an underutilized area that I had never been up here before I had the race and now I can't get enough of the place. So after the runners are finished with the race, they come through here. We have refreshments. Uh, my friend QB, who is awesome, he's been here every year. This is his fourth year, and I'm so pleased he got a sunny day to move all his equipment out here. And he dances, he sings, he's a lot of fun. He brings it. Whether people are excited for a nice run in the forest or they're really excited about recycling and learning more about the environment, as long as it grows every year and people keep coming out and doing the right thing, I'm happy as can be. Reporting from Miles Standish State Forest in Plymouth, I'm Brian Sullivan, PAC-TV Community News. Our health and wellness segment brings us back to the Kingsbury Club in Kingston for a close-up look at the significance of youth tennis. This is a great program for children. Here at the Kingsbury Club, we like to promote it in terms of a lifetime sport. Families can enjoy it, kids can start young, they can play with their parents. Uh, it even goes to the point where we have family time on Sundays. It's a great way to spend time together. It's important when kids are learning a sport to use equipment that is appropriate to their size. The equipment here that you see is um, a net that is much lower, a court that is much shorter. It's only 36 feet. Uh, the balls we use are red balls. They bounce, they're only 25% pressure, so they bounce at the right height. The kids then can connect in their uh, strike zone. When they do that, they are more consistent, they develop rallying skills, and they can actually learn to play. There's this new 10 and under teaching methodology and philosophy, which is great. It's a scaled down version of regular tennis, and it uses uh, tennis balls that they're able to control and succeed with. So when they succeed, it really breeds their interest and they get so much more enjoyment out of it, which is so great because uh, for little kids who don't succeed on a tennis court, they get bored pretty quickly. So it's great because then when they start succeeding, it leads into them having more and more activity out on the court. And so not only are they learning a sport, but they're getting out and they're, they're, they're using energy and they're being active, which is so important for these guys. When you learn the game of tennis, you're learning to develop skills, you're, you're developing your confidence, how you feel about yourself, you feel good about learning something new, being able to implement it. Um, you also have a nice social aspect. There are people to play with. You can play with people of any ages. Um, it doesn't have any boundaries that way. Kids can play with adults, seniors can play with juniors. It's a social aspect that really makes it fun. So when these children succeed and you see the joy in them and the happiness, it's great, you know, how they run out on the court with their full energy and they're ready to go and that's, that's really good. None of these children are, are dragging out here. They want to be here and that's because it is a learning environment, but it's a fun learning environment and that's what's so important for these guys. That's what's going to keep them wanting to do this sport, which is truly a sport of a lifetime. Developmentally for children, it develops hand-eye coordination. All the skills they use relate to sending and receiving. So we use balls, we use rackets, we use cones. They're able to send the ball and receive it by catching it. When they develop these kind of skills, they can progress even further to using the racket. Once they can use the racket, they're developing rallying skills. When they can rally, they can play. Their goal is to be consistent, learn the rules so that they can actually play matches. When they can do this, it expands a whole opportunity for them to progress further and further in tennis. When you get children into a group situation or a group clinic situation, what we do out here a lot is we really work with these children to work cooperatively. What they get is they get the ability to work hard, they get the ability to, to learn the sport, they get the ability also to say, well, hey, in this exercise that I'm doing, if I don't work with my partner, it's not gonna work out. But most importantly, it's getting out, being active, and, and, and really, it's, it is a sport of a lifetime, you know? It's such a beautiful thing to see four-year-olds out here and then to see the 84-year-olds the out here as well. 
Town Talk is from Pembroke this week with a recap of the recent town meeting from Town Administrator Ed Thorne. Well, hi folks, this is Ed Thorne, Town Administrator for the Town of Pembroke. Uh, and we're going to review our, our previous town meeting and, uh, and how that will affect our events coming up in the community for the summer. Um, one of the th interesting uh, articles that was passed was uh, solar bylaws for uh, our capped landfill. Um, there were three articles that dealt with the leasing of the property, uh, power purchase agreements with any developer there, and any uh, payment in lieu of tax uh, arrangement that we uh, that we get. So we're looking forward to uh, working with the Energy Committee and with uh, uh, people that would respond to our RFP and uh, we're interested in seeing uh, how we can generate electricity, reduce electricity for town departments and also how much money we'll be able to generate from the leasing of the property as well as payment in lieu of taxes. So. Uh, that's a big project that we're going to be working on, uh, like I said, with our Energy Committee and the Board of Selectmen, and uh, hopefully that'll pay some uh, serious dividends for the town. Another uh, article that was passed was the uh, creation, or actually the uh, increasing the authority of the town administrator. Um, we were real pleased that uh, town meeting uh, voted uh, overwhelmingly to, to support that. And that will give our government study committee, which uh, is headed up by Selectman Dan Tribuco, uh, to work on uh, this summer and the fall um, as a, a kind of like a basis for them uh, to look at the town government uh, and, and use the DOR report that was uh, uh, submitted to the uh, Selectman just a couple of months ago. Uh, also, town meeting uh, voted uh, a budget for FY15. Uh, it's balanced, and uh, we're very confident that uh, all town departments, as well as the school department, uh, are looking forward to operating um, uh, FY15 um, um, somewhat uh, a little bit more relaxed than last year when we uh, up, uh, began the year with a, uh, with a, a small deficit. So, uh, and we have, especially with the summer months coming up, we have some recreational projects that we're going to be working on. Uh, the uh, 300th anniversary committee uh, has some uh, leftover funds that we're going to be using to survey the Herring Run property. And we're hoping uh, uh, with a $100,000 grant from uh, Senator Murray's office and the legislature that, you know, we're going to be able to make improvements to the Herring Run Park there on, on uh, Barker Street. And uh, we think the public's going to enjoy some of the additions that we're going to make uh, to the park. Uh, our Recreation Commission is also uh, setting aside funds to make some improvements to the Bird Street Park, as well as the Mattachesa Street ball fields. We're going to improve the, the parking conditions out there at Mattachesa Street, improve the handicap accessibility and, and parking out at Bird Street. So, um, you know, basically we're going to, uh, you know, open up uh, uh, the, the projects that we've been sitting on for a while, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, having these projects be enjoyed by the, by the Pembroke public. And uh, we think that the, the, this past town meeting uh, will uh, allow us to uh, spend some of those funds in a, uh, in a very uh, judicious manner. And uh, we think the public will enjoy some of the amenities that we'll provide. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching this week's edition of PAC TV Community News. Replay times are listed on our website, pactv.org. Click the PCN tab to watch individual stories or an entire program. And see us on YouTube by searching for the PAC TV Community News channel. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to receive previews each week with links to all our stories. We love to hear feedback on our stories or ideas for new ones. So send your emails to kim at pactv.org. We'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the three interns that we have had working with us here at PAC TV for the last three months. Michael, Sean, and Wen Yu. Please come out, folks, so we can thank you appropriately. They have been not only helpful, they have learned a lot. They've done editing, they've done filming, they've done uh, camera work, they've worked the control rooms. This is Sean, this is Michael, and this is Wen Yu. And we thank them very much for being part of our PAC TV community news team. Thank you, Julie, and we'll see you next week on PAC-TV Community News.